Hi, I'm Reed Pierce. Welcome to Straight Pool, the podcast brought to you by the Pro Beers Tour. We're at Norfolk, Virginia at International Nine Ball Championship. I'm here with Kim Davenport, the Hall of Famer, Josh Roberts, and myself. Kim, what do you have to say here about what's going on here at the uh, International Open? Well, I'll tell you what, it's a, a hell of a tournament. Uh, Pat has really done uh, produced a great event here, and I, I look for the champion to be uh, one of the top players. I, watch, I watched him play, uh, and it's unbelievable how good they play. And I know that you're, you're out of the tournament now, and yes, I, I apologize for not really knowing a lot about you. I've been out of pool for a couple of decades now, but I've heard a lot of good stories about you. You're always finishing high in the money. And you grew up in Boston and moved to South Carolina. Is yeah. there somebody in South Carolina that took you under your wing to teach you, or did you just go into the pool and learn naturally? Or how, well, how I, was playing, uh, I was already playing. I was already playing pool when I left Boston. I had a uh, table in the basement, and I used to go to little boys and girls club when I was about six. Is kind of how I started, and you know, I just liked the game. And so, uh, but yeah, when I moved to the South, uh, I didn't have a table, and uh, but I still played so I'd go to the little local bars and stuff and play and then mom got me a little bar table when I was 15 and started getting in competition when I was you know 16 17 going to little pool room tournaments and stuff and that's how I got started beautiful let me ask you this Josh um what kind of cue do you play with uh right now I'm playing with a low max low max with a mutual shaft yeah. is that a uh is, Michi, is Bob making a, a carbon fiber shaft? Yeah, he makes he makes two different ones. He makes the uh, first generation and the second generation. The first one is high deflection, kind of plays like maple, plays like wood. That's the Can one you I like. explain that to the audience out there? Because when I grew up, I, I played with nothing but maple shafts. You know, they were hard shafts, wood. And and what what's going on with these new composite shafts? What? Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I think the uh, kind of like a high performance type thing, right? Back in the day when you used wood, you had to have a better stroke to get the ball around the table. You know, you kind of had to hit everything a little harder. And uh, the carbon fiber is, you know, a little more stiff, so you can, uh, it takes a little bit less stroke to move the cue ball. You can draw the ball easier, you know. It's, you know, they have the weight you can put in the back of the cue. Everybody's playing with extensions now, you know, so you really don't have to have much of a stroke nowadays. I want one of those. Yeah, <laughs> really, really. Uh, I know, uh, Josh. I uh, I was I've been out of the game a long time myself. Uh, but I had a restaurant, a business in Jackson, uh, was actually in Byron, Mississippi, and uh, I was running that, and it was full time. You know, it was owning a restaurant 24 hours a day. You know, it takes your life basically. But uh, I know you came to Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, while I had that place, and I was always hearing about you yeah. uh, playing uh, uh, a lot of high dollar uh, games, yeah. really high dollar games around the uh, green room, the old green room where I kind of practiced out of. Uh, yeah, uh, I had a few guys taking me out of there. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, tell us, can you tell us about some of those games, or would you want to get into any of that? Or uh... Well, I mean, you know, it was just, uh, you know, money games. You know, I heard there was a lot of money being bet there from a friend of mine, and so I First went there on the road with a uh, buddy of mine from Jackson. He actually uh, got in touch with me in South Carolina, drove all the way over, picked me up, and I went over and I played uh, some of their best players over there just on the bar table. I was only a bar table player then and just starting in one pocket. And uh, they had some, you know, to my surprise, they had some pretty good players over there. I actually won a set, lost a set, and, you know. Then I, uh, I started going back over there and playing a big money guy over there. I won't call his name, but... You know, he he was betting per game sometimes three, four thousand a game. You know, he'd be betting well, fifteen hundred a game and two, three hundred a game from each guy on the side. He have a line of people, you know, betting that money. And uh, you know, I beat him out of so much he decided to start staking me. And uh, that's kinda how I started going to New Orleans, playing Ronnie Wiseman's and the Justin Halls and Danny Smith's and all those guys. So that's how I got into all that. Well, you know, it was a good thing for you, uh, because I know you won a lot of money. I heard, you know, um, well, the word was you won a lot of money. You were, you were, you didn't book any losers, really, from what I was told. You, no. you was pretty much winning. Yeah, I, yeah. I had a good, about a 90% win rate in those three or four years that I was playing in Jackson. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, no doubt. 90% uh, rate. Oh, I tell you what, I would never play in a tournament as long as I live if I could win 90%. Well, I always had it. Well, I, I was rate. I was on a 90% clip until I ran into you. So, yeah. you know, that well, was I mean, it was that was before you were born. Right, right. <laughs> it was partly just, you know, matching up good and, you know what I'm saying? I had a you know, when you have a guy that 
is behind you and they don't care about the money and that makes all the difference. You know, when you have a state course that's tied on you, they're cringing every time you mess up, mm. you know, that's hard to play like that. But this guy, you know, if I lost a set, man, go ahead, get him, play another set, you know. Well, that's, and that's that's freedom right there as a player, you know, sure, to be able to do sure. that. So, well, let me ask you about me to win a lot. Um, Kim said it earlier, you know, you've you've had, uh, from what I see, you know, you've, man, you've been really close. You've been really close. You win a, you've won some one pocket events. I know that you, you're always, if you don't win the one pocket events, it looks like you're always second or third, you know, it's kind right, of looks I'm like trying that. to get in there. Yeah. You know, it looks like to me, you're always right there. And then in the nine balls, uh, nine ball events, uh, you've been really close. Um, is there anything that, uh, that, that you that, that you might be gonna try to change that could get you over that hump because it looks like to me I've watched you play it looks like to me you play as good as anybody in there I mean you have the ability to be you know you you're as good a shot maker I don't know maybe you got a weakness that I that I haven't picked up on I haven't watched you that much but it looks like to me that you could win one of these tournaments here in any moment it looks like to me oh well, my my weakness is this setting right you know playing in this type of setting probably maybe twice a year as far as you know prestigious you know stand set up you know big tv arena all that so a little more pressure than just going to the pool hall playing in your average tournament I understand. I had that same problem a lot, you know, because there wasn't a lot of tournaments and uh, we weren't able to get comfortable being in that setting. What you said is very important. I don't know if the people back at home don't understand what he's saying is, you know, you go into these big arenas. I know I was the same way, Josh. You know, you played in tight quarters. You, uh, uh, you know, you felt comfortable in here. You get in this big wide open spaces. People are moving around. Right, and it's so just, quiet. Yeah, it's quiet, and it's just a totally different atmosphere. And then it just, you know, you you, you have to just a, adapt to it. Now, Kim, he played back in the day, and he he played in so many tournaments over the years. He he finally trained himself to get there. I see I see you having a chance of winning, man. Myself, I mean, I really do. I, I like your game. I uh, I think you got a chance of doing something. So, uh, uh, that being said, uh, Kim, what what do you think? Well. I think this young man has a uh, really good chance to win one of these events coming up pretty soon just because he's been so close. And when you get close, if you keep getting close, you can win. But like he said, he's only played in a couple events a year. So there's just not that many tournaments. Now, if there was, like when we played, 18, 20 tournaments a year, well, th then it would be much easier for you. But, sure. but see, if you, if you train for a month or two months and then you've got the tournament, and then there's no tournaments for three months, well, you know, you just, unless you just love the game and you don't have no other life, you know, you're just, you, 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 you have to just stay dormant for a while and then train again. And it's, it's, it's tough. What, what do you do, uh, Josh, like on your uh, days off? What are you, you have any hobbies? Uh, um, uh, I have kids. You got five kids? Yeah, five kids, one on the way, one about to pop out in about a week. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. I didn't know that. They keep me busy with my free time, whatever. Well, no, no, you got to, you, you got to, you have a, a you know, I, I tip my hat to you, brother, for doing what you've done in pool. You've got a lot of accomplishments in pool. And, uh, you know, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm going to go out and predict before long, this man's going to end up winning one of these major nine ball events, 10 ball events. I, from what I've seen, he's got the game to be able to do it. He's gonna have to get comfortable in the environment in there. I think he can pull it off. Yeah. Me too. Okay, having said that, for the Pro Billiards Tour, we are gonna check out right now and all the best to you and probillardstour.com, go to YouTube, probillardstour.com and we will see you later on our next show. Thank you for- All right, guys, thanks for having me. Kim Davenport. Josh Roberts, appreciate Josh, you, man. All the best on. to you, buddy. Thanks Pro for stopping by. Go online, YouTube, and subscribe. Thank y'all.